Hi, I'm back here again with the third video in my series on building a CRM system in Google Sheets. In this video we'll be taking a look at my vehicle logbook and we'll be handling some data. We'll be taking records of this data as well as doing some basic analysis on the data we've recorded. If you operate a small business and you use a vehicle to conduct that business, you're going to need to keep a record of your vehicle usage in order to claim your vehicle expenses back as a deduction on your taxes. This sheet can help you do that by allowing you to easily record data about your vehicle usage as well as do much of the calculation for you. Here I'm going to talk about the different elements that make up this sheet and all the things that make it work so that you can implement something similar for yourself. To start with, I've got the first six rows of my sheet frozen, and two of those are my column headers here. Just above that, we have a small form that you can fill out with relevant data. We have a button to return home in the top left-hand corner, and we also have a small panel for analytics on the data that we've recorded here. What we want our analytics panel to show us is the percentage of personal use of the vehicle, the percentage of business use, and then we can take those figures and use them to work out just how much of our vehicle expenses can be deducted. So I'll go ahead and start adding a record. Um, you'll notice that I already have an odometer reading in this cell here as 2215. And we have some cells here which record data, but these really are optional. On the form here, we can add a purpose. We can add an origin, destination, and the number of kilometers that we've done. We can either enter the number of total kilometers of the journey, or we can enter the odometer reading at the end of the journey. So let's say, for example, I've done 35 kilometers, and that was for business use. I can now add this data to my logbook by clicking on Add Record. And you'll see that the various fields down here have been filled out. The odometer reading at the end of our trip has been automatically calculated from the number of kilometers which I've entered and the starting value. If I've forgotten to record how many kilometers my journey was and I don't want to do the math on that, I can simply put the actual odometer reading, let's say 2314, and we'll make that for personal. And I'll add that record as well. And you can see that the total kilometers of the journey has been calculated for me. So whichever method you prefer to use, you can enter either your total kilometers here or your ending value. Taking a look at our analytics here, we have a division of the number of kilometers as well as the percentage of the vehicle usage, which has gone into personal usage, as well as for business and obviously our total kilometers. You can change the value here if you measure your distance in miles and these fields will automatically update as well. You can also see that my most recent odometer reading has been updated each time I've entered a line to reflect what the odometer reading should be at the moment. So that demonstrates all of the different working parts of this sheet. Now I'll go ahead and work through the individual components which make it up. I'll start by deleting these two entries here and we can take a look at the type cell for my form. If I right click here and come down to data validation, I simply have a list of items with business and personal. In this cell, I simply have a note stating that you can either enter the number of kilometers driven or the odometer reading. In my analytics panel, if I click on the number of miles for my personal usage, we have a relatively simple calculation here using a function you might not have seen before, which is called sum if. Sum if is quite straightforward. It's very similar to sum, which will add up all of the values in a particular column. However, sum if will only add up the values which meet a certain criteria. So for example, if those numbers are greater than 10 or lower than 10, whichever your criteria happens to be. With sum if, you can add a second range which actually contains the values that it's going to be adding up, whereas the first range specified needs to meet the given criteria. So if we take a look at this formula, we have two ranges specified. We have I7 to I. And if you didn't already know, you don't need to specify an ending row if you're specifying a range like this. You can specify I7 to I20 if you want to. But if you just want everything below I7, you can leave the number out and the formula will use data up to whichever is the last row. So that's my first range, I7 to I. And my criteria 
is this string, just the word personal. And then my second range is going to be h7 to h, which is the column just to the left. And this is the column that's going to contain all of my actual kilometer values that I want to add up. So this first part is adding up all of the values in this column where the string personal appears in this column. Once it has that sum, it's using the ampersand to join that number to a string which is just a space, and then another ampersand to join it to the value that's in T3. And that value is just over here, miles. And so when we change that, the value over here changes as well. In the cell just beside it, we have the same sum if with the same range, looking at column I for our criteria and column H for our values. Once it gets that data, it divides it by S3, which is this cell over here. And S3 is quite a bit simpler. It's simply the sum of everything in column H. And just coming back to my percentage cell, you can see that this formula starts with an if error function, and that prevents the sheet from returning an error if the value in S3 is zero. If I didn't include the if error here, then what I would get is this kind of error stating that I can't divide by zero. So if you want to avoid seeing this, we can simply put if error at the very start of the function and enclose everything else in parentheses. And we don't need to add any more statements or arguments to that if error. It's simply going to leave this cell blank if there is some sort of error. Now I'll take a quick look at the JavaScript function, which is programmed to this button, and see what it's doing. I already have my script editor open at the top of the screen, and I've already created another script file here and called it add records. All of the data that you see here is included in the function add record logbook, and most of the functions and methods that you see here have been used in previous scripts of mine, but I'll go through this quickly just to show you some of the different things that we're doing here. First of all, as always, we have our first two lines defining which spreadsheet we're working with and which sheet on that spreadsheet we're working with. The next thing we're doing is inserting a row after a specified row. So here we're specifying row 7 and we're inserting a row just after that. So having a look at our sheet, here is row 7 and the row would be inserted between 7 and 8. These next two rows are two variables. The first one is my source range and the second is my target range. So the source range is going to be row seven, which you can see already has some cells pre-formatted. And my target range is going to be just below it where there are no formatted cells. Here I'm using the copy to function to copy my source range to my target range. And that gives me all of my formatted cells. I'll come back to this section towards the end so that we can see how it might be done a little bit better or a little bit more compact. All of the variables that you see between line 10 and line 15 are taking data and populating other cells with that data. So our first one is quite simple. It's getting a range which is A8 and that's the first cell in my brand new line and it's populating that with today's date. So we're getting a range and then we're setting a value. In the next line down, we can see a variable origin, which is getting a cell in my new row, and we're setting a value, but then we've got something else in the parentheses here. We're actually effectively calling up another range and getting that value while we're arguing what value we want to set. So you can see here we have sheet get range, and over here we've also got sheet get range. Now you could make this two completely separate lines and make a separate variable if you wanted to. And then instead of specifying this get range, get value as an argument, we can simply specify the variable. And that's going to do effectively the same thing. And if you're using this variable for other things, you might like to do it this way. But since we're only going to be using this variable once, then we don't really need to specify a specific variable for it. We can simply include all of this in our set value argument.
You can see that I've used that quite extensively throughout my sheets here. In order to understand what this is doing, we really need to think of these first specified cells as the target or where the data is going to end up and think of the second specified cells as where the data is coming from. A little bit further down, we have something a bit different. We have an if function. And what this is doing is this allows us to enter either the number of kilometers that we've traveled or the odometer reading, whichever we prefer, without having to specify which of those two things we've added. And this is quite simple, really. All it's doing is checking to see if the value that we specified is greater than the most recent odometer reading or if it's smaller. In this instance, we're asking, is this value smaller than the odometer reading? And if so, do all of this stuff. A little bit further down, we have else if, where we're asking if the specified value is greater than our odometer reading, then do all of this stuff. So here in this if statement, we're calculating what the ending odometer value is based on the number of kilometers given and the previous odometer reading. And down here, we're subtracting the ending odometer reading from the starting odometer reading. And that gives us the ending odometer reading, which we then punch into H8. The last thing that the script does is clear the forms. At the moment, it's clearing I3 and F2 to F4 which is all of the form except this cell here. You could clear this as well if you wanted to. I've just chosen to leave that one out. Throughout that script, we're also updating C4 as our last odometer reading. It's not really necessary to keep this separate. I just like to see it up there up front as I'm working on my sheet. Uh, it gives me an easy reference if there's any sort of error in the data that I've given. And we're doing that either here or here depending on which method we've used to enter our data. I've also added a small function on my navigation sheet called navhome, this guy here, which I've assigned to my home button, and that allows me to jump straight to my home page. We worked through these navigation functions in the last video, and this is effectively a copy of these guys here with the appropriate name entered in the name selection. Coming back to my add record script, I did mention that this section could be done a little bit better. And what I meant by that is that rather than specifying these variables, which aren't actually used anywhere else in the script, we can simply skip creating these variables and use these arguments directly. So this is my target range. And this is my source range. I can comment these two guys out. I'll save my changes. And if I run this script again, you'll see that we've gotten just the same result. So row eight has been created with the appropriate formatting. And we now only have one line here instead of three. Although it is a little bit more complicated to look at, if you understand it and it suits you, then that's the method that you can use to avoid creating variables that are only used once. In the next video, I'm going to show you how you can easily copy this script as well as this sheet so that we can create a similar expenses sheet without having to do all of that work a second time. But I hope that's been helpful for you. Thanks for watching and I'll catch you in the next video.